This part uh, is in relation to the example 19 on page 20 in chapter 1. And that's the example which asks for, ask for an expression, an expression of cosine of phi theta, so the cosine of a multiple of an angle, in terms of, in terms of the cosine of theta and sine of theta. So our job here is to express this cosine as a combination of these two sine and cosines. Uh, a variant of such formula you've seen earlier in your probably in your school, where you express a cosine of two theta in terms of cosine and sine theta. The formula was cosine squared takes sine squared. Uh, you might also see in the formula for the cosine three theta in terms of cos and sine and so on. Today I'll show you how to come up with the formula for cosine five theta. And in fact, the method we're going to, we will use it, it suits it suits for any multiple. In fact, but five is of particular interest, and I'll explain why later. So the whole method starts from the Moore formula. Here it is. That's the formula you should know. It's the formula which connects powers of trigonometric forms and the multiples of angles. That's the version of the Moore theorem. Let me put it here. That's the one. I hope I spell it correctly. I'll double check later. Uh, now, next, what we're going to need, we're going to need a, we're going to need a binomial expansion, uh, binomial expansion for left hand side here, and that's the binomial expansion of si binomial expansion of size five. Uh, I, I prepared here. I prepared here Pascal triangle for that for that for that purpose. So here's my Pascal triangle. Here's my Pascal triangle of size five. Pascal triangle. Mm, sorry, it's not complete of it. That's that's the I I, mean, I missed uh, I didn't open the last line of this Pascal triangle. Here it is. The fifth line of my Pascal triangle. So if I use these coefficients, uh, this three one five ten and uh, the rest by symmetry. That's the binomial expansion for the left hand side. So this, I'm not going to take this left hand side here and expand it with the binomial expansion. In fact, I'll do it in a smarter way. I'll just look directly. What I'm going to do is this I'm going to take the real part on the left hand side here and I'm going to try to see what will be the real part in this expansion without actually writing the expansion. Well, it's not really that difficult as it might sound. Because all we have to do, we have to collect in this in this binomial expansion. All we have to do, we have to collect collect all all those terms which carry b, because b is the one which delivers imaginary unit into the expression. B this b, so this i sine theta. So all we have to do, we have to look for this expansion, and we have to collect only those terms where b comes with even power, because when b comes with even power, this imaginary identity will disappear. And that will be this one, b comes with the power 0, it will be this one, b comes with the power 2, and it will be this one. So if I take the real part on the right hand side here, here it is, cos 5 theta, I can equate it to the real part here, and the real part here will have this component, which is cos 5 theta, then it will have this component, negative 10 cos cube theta sine square theta negative because this negative because p square it's a, it delivers i square which is negative and then it also will have 5 cos theta sine 4 theta that's this term and that finishes the job we just express cos 5 theta here it is in terms of cos theta and sine theta we can also equate imaginary parts here and imaginary parts here, and that will actually give us the formula for sine of five theta, right? Look at this. Uh, look at this. Uh, it's here. That's my sine theta. So if I take the imaginary part on this side of my equation, then then 
on the right hand side I'll put the imaginary part which comes from this expansion and that will be those parts in this expansion which carries B in odd powers, so this three. So on the right hand side we will have 5 cos theta sine theta, 5 cos to the power of 4 theta sine theta, then goes negative 10 cos square sine cube theta, that's this component, and negative because b cube has i cube, and i cube is a negative i, and finally you got sine to the power of 5 theta, that's the one which comes from here. Good, so actually we did more than question asked for, we found not only cos, we also found, found sine phi theta in that expression, but we will take this question even further now, because what I will do next, I'll take this last, the latest identity we come up with, and I'll try to make this identity, especially the right hand side, uh, cost free. So I want to get rid of all of these costs, in fact. This is easy. Because, for instance, this cost, it's a fundamental trigonometric identity, it's equal to 1 takes sine square theta, this cost. And this cost to the power of 4 is 1 takes sine square and another square. So if I take this, and by the way, if I expand this with the binomial formula, like so, so if I use these two expressions, this one and this one, in place of this cos and in place of this cos, I can come up with the expression on the right hand side, which is a pure sine expression. No cosses will be there at all. I'm not going to directly substitute. Again, I'll do some shortcuts. Let's just do the shortcut. So here's my sine phi theta on the left hand side. Now, what I will do is this, I'll collect, let me just open this for you. So, what I'm saying is that sine 5, uh, sorry, what I'm saying is that sine to the power of 5 will come with this coefficients 5, 10, and 1. Let's just check down, let's just chase down where these coefficients came from. For instance, this 5, it came from, it came from taking this sine to the 4 and multiplying with this extra sine. That's why we have 5 coefficients. This 10, uh, this thing came from taking this negative sine square and multiplying with this sine cube, and that's why 10 came in. So this negative and this, this negative and this negative made it plus. Finally, this one is just this standalone sine, sine to the power of five. So that's all of the sine to the power, power of five, which appears in this, in this right hand side, and I collected all of them. Now I collect all of these signs in the power of three. And those will come if I take, for instance, this negative 2 sine square with this sign, and this 5. So it's negative 10. And the other one will come if I take this negative 10 times this 1 and times this sine cube. That's another negative 10. Finally, I can also collect this sign in the power 1. And that's, that will come when I take this sign and multiply by this one. And that's your coefficient 5. That's it. That's all of the signs collected together. All of the signs collected together, if you do the arithmetic within these brackets, the result will be something like this. And that's, look at this, it's a pure sign expression for the sign of multiple of 5 theta. Right. It's not over yet. We can develop this question even further. Look at this. What I will do now, I'll scroll it up a little bit. And I ask the simple question, what will happen if I take very particular value of theta? What if I take the value of theta pi on 5? Like so. So what I will do, I'll set x to be sine pi on 5. And If I do that, then look what happens on the right hand side here. If your theta is 0.5, then sine here, here 5 theta will be just pi. And we know that sine of pi is 0. So this identity, left hand side and his right hand side, if I substitute this into it with this particular choice for theta, and if I remember that the sine of pi, which is 5 theta, is just 0, I'll come up with the I'll come up with the equation like so. 16x squared, that's for this. Negative 2x cubed, that's for this. 5x, that's for this, equals 0, which stands for this. 
Well, this equation obviously has a trivial solution, x equals 0, but it, it, this, is, this, isn't, this isn't something of, of interest to us because this value obviously is not 0, it's a positive number. And we have something like this for the rest of it. Uh, we can solve this equation. It's a quadratic equation. We can solve it. Here's a solution. x squared equal uh, negative, uh, sorry, positive 10 plus minus root 100 take 80 by 16. That's the half formula applied to this equation. Half formula for the roots of the quadratics applied to this equation. And if you do the arithmetic quickly, you will end up with something like this. Two values. We still need to take the root of these two values. Let me just look at this. We still need to take the roots of the root of these two values, but before we do that, let's just think about let's just think about why which of those two values, plus or minus, will correspond to my sign. Uh, it's not that easy. In fact, both values here are positive. Both values here are less than one, so you can't filter out one of them just just on the simple. So just just simply saying that one of them negative or one of them bigger than one, both of them really match these two criteria, so both of them seems to be reasonable values for sine. But you, what you can do is this, you can observe actually that sine of pi and 4 is 1 over 2, which means that the square of sine of pi and 4 is 1 half. And pi and 5, in fact, is something which is less than pi and 4, which means the sine, because sine is an increasing function, sign must be also less than this value. And out of these two values, with plus and minus, only the one with minus is less than one half. That's why for the sign pi and 2, sorry, for the sign pi and 5, we have to pick negative in this expression, and that's what I did here. I picked negative. Good. Good. Now, I'll do a little trick now with this expression. I'll rewrite this expression. Uh, I'll, I'll rewrite this expression differently. I'll rewrite this expression, this expression for sine pi and 5, like this. 1 half, like in here, 1 plus, and this expression on the bottom square. Uh, I'm not going to check this arithmetic here in front of you. I'll leave it for you to verify. Just trust me at this point that actually if you do the arithmetic here, you will, if you do the arithmetic here under the expression of square root, you will find this expression. The reason I changed, the, changed this expression to this seemingly longer and more complex one is the connection between this value, between the sine of pi and 5, with the construction of perfect pentagon. And I will demonstrate this connection here on this diagram. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Here's my perfect pentagon. And imagine the radius of this pentagon, so distance from this center point, I mean, sorry, not the radius of the pentagon, but the radius of circumscribed, circumscribed circle. So the distance from zero up to the point one here. Imagine this distance is one. And then, because it's a perfect pentagon, we know that this angle, this spread, it's the one five of the complete revolution. So this spread is two pi and five, or this spread, which is a half of that, is pi and five. Right. So we know that this angle is 90 degrees, so this half of a side of the perfect pentagon is the radius multiplied by the sine of this angle. So this half, in fact, this half, in fact, is just sine of pi on 5. Or in fact, the whole side of the perfect pentagon, the whole side of the perfect pentagon, is double of this value. Okay, that's, that's a very simple observations about the perfect pentagon. But now let's just see how this connected with this value. With this value, remember I just said it. If I call this point, if I call this point A, if I call this point B, then the distance AB is two sines of pi and five, or this distance AB is just this value. The distance AB is just this value, with no one half in front. Good. Now, think about this. If this side is 1, so then this side is 1, 
and this is if this is a middle point so if this is the one half then by Pythagoras theorem let me call this point V1 that's the middle point of this radius from center O to this point on the side I'm not going to name it so the distance OB1 is one half so by Pythagoras theorem if you do the Pythagoras for these two values if you do the Pythagoras for these two values then this side will be uh, square root 5 on 2 if you do the Pythagoras for these two values so if you sum the squares of these two and put it under the root it will be this now you see this, 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 this distance from B you see this distance from B to B1 I colored it with blue if you take this distance if you drop it down if you're keeping this point fixed but if you drop the point B keeping the distance down to here to this point if I call this point B2 then the distance between B2 and O will be the this length this length root 5 on 5 minus 1 half so this distance in fact it is root 5 on 2 minus 1 half hmm? this is extra 1 which we have to remove minus 1 half and so if you do the Pythagoras now for the triangle B2 O B this red distance this red distance by the Pythagoras it will be 1 squared plus this expression squared but it's something which my which is the expression for my double of the sine so this distance B to the B2 is in fact the same as distance AB so you can take this distance now and you can, you can project this distance onto the circumference of the circle and that's how you can find the length of the side of the perfect pentagon with just simple Pythagoras type operations. Think about this again. We were able to find the sine of pi and 5 or we were able to find the length of the perfect pentagon inscribed into a unital circle by doing simple Pythagoras operations. This is